All right, now let's get into some <laughs> off-season movement. Um, we're going to talk through all the like non-big ones, and then we'll talk about the Eagle Command MVP. Uh, what? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> That's how we're breaking the news here. It happened a week ago. We already had a reaction video over on the Griplock channel, if you would have seen it. Uh, first off, the first one I wanted to highlight is Lisa Fake is put on Instagram. And she said, this year I'm going, I don't remember the exact quote, I could pull it up, but basically this year I'm going to be sponsored by Team Me. And she's going, she has oh, a retail ah. sponsor, but she's not like. Is she with Lone Star? She was with Lone Star. Yeah. So she went from Innova to Lone Star, and now she is sponsorless this year going out on tour. Um, she has a retail like partner sponsor, but it didn't seem like she's not considering them their primary I'm sponsor. I'm seeing more people in this boat than ever before this year. Yeah. It's, uh, it's. Like they just can't even get something. Yeah. Yeah. We've seen it with several people, um, and I'm about to go over this list because I'm looking at Ultra World's contract tracker, and the list I'm about to read you is a very long list of players that start with the Eagle McMahon deal, which is a week ago, and have been since then. So like I said, either, because most of them are like smaller names, either Ultra World just decided to update all of it at once, most likely scenario, or this all happened last week, um, but 90% of this people signing contracts right now are one year deals. Oh yeah. Like nobody's nobody's kidding. everyone's contract is a one year deal right now, which is crazy. Like even back to stuff that was happening beginning of this off season, it's like funny you can see twenty twenty four off season all one year and then you get back to like everyone who's like unsigned or like in the middle of a contract and it's no all longer. like three year, four year, five it's year, crazy. ten year, two year, three year, two it is crazy. So anyways, here we go. I'm going to just read these off rapid fire style. Let me get back to Eagles. So we had Alden Hare signed a two-year deal with Discmania. Um, that was pretty big news net last year, last week, but we knew that was coming post-Gannon signing. You have Zach Melton, one-year extension with Dynamic. Jesse Niemannen, one-year new contract with Castaplast. Stacey Ronsley, a one-year extension with Castaplast. Sayananda signed a two-year extension with Westside Discs. Aaron Gossage, he was one of the ones to watch this year. He signed a two-year extension with Discraft, so that's oh, nice. big for them to keep him. Wow. Tuomas Hyatianen, don't know how to say his name, two-year extension nice. with Discmania. Very good attempt, though. I did try. Uh, Jake Mon signed a one-year deal with DGA. Scott Withers, one-year deal with AGL. I think Scott Withers is also with retail sponsors as well. Um, but he signed a one-year deal with AGL Discs. Miro Rahanen signed a one-year deal, new deal with Discmania. Colton Montgomery, one-year extension with Discmania. Cynthia Ricciotti, one-year extension with Discmania. Ezra Robinson, one-year extension with Prodigy. He's a big one to watch. Yeah. Ezra Robinson. That's interesting. He didn't get um, a bigger deal. Yeah, a one-year like extension a with Prodigy. Last year. Uh, he could have a really big season this upcoming year. So, honestly, probably smart on his part to just sign the one-year deal, I, I think, because yeah, I out. he'll probably be worth more at the end of this upcoming season. James Proctor, one-year extension with ThoughtSpace. Robert Burridge, one-year extension with Lone Star. Sarah Hokum, one-year extension with MVP. Silas Schultz, one-year extension with Discmania. Holland Handley, the other another big one, mm. two-year extension with Discraft. So Discraft was able to keep her Discraft again. Discraft doing work. <laughs> Grady Shu, one-year extension with Infinite. And then this is all new players to DGA. El- I can never say her name right. Eliza Midling. Dude, she's good. Yeah. One year new deal with DGA. She could be a player. To, basically, DGA kind of signed a stacked young team of like all these players could be someone to walk, watch out for. Parker Welk, one year deal with DGA. Macy Vela Diaz got picked up by DGA. Uh, Evan Scott, one year new deal with DGA. And Sullivan Tipton, one yeah, year they, deal with DGA. They, just, they were going all in on the young talent. I yeah. Like so it. they went all out there. But yeah, like this it. is the year of one year deals. Um, yeah. A lot of players, whether they wanted it or not, I would imagine a lot of these players don't want a one-year deal. No. Um, Which, honestly, got the one-year deal. I love that for oh, us. Also, Tristan Tanner. I don't know if I ever yeah, said we, him we with DGA. Okay. Week. I love that for our podcast because that just means that free agency is going to stay interesting next year because all yeah. these players are going to have well, to decide what they're going to do So, again. the end of 2024, we'll have all the one-year deals wrapping up. The only ones that are like... Is there any monster deals you that have, are wrapping up? I was trying to look at it. I mean... Cole Rodallin could be an interesting one at the end of this Certainly. upcoming year. He could Ella be Hansen winner. could be another one. Certainly. Um, Mason Ford, I think, could be interesting. Yeah. Brody Smith, it'll be interesting to see what happens yeah. there. Ezra. Corey Ellis, Ezra Aderhold, Anthony Barella. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. Big Discraft um, names. Yeah, Discraft will be interesting next year. I'm trying to scroll down. Cat Merch will end up next year, as well as Jennifer Allen, Joel Freeman, Own Scoggins. Own. All That's them a big from Innova. One too. 2025 is the year where things really start big ones opening there. up. Uh, Jeremy Colling ends next year. That's Isaac Robinson. Here we go. Yeah. Ends ne- this upcoming season. 
So we're going to be reloading. So Adam Ham is another one. Kevin Jones is the year after. Sorry, Are read we? him wrong. But yeah, 2025, you have a lot of like Kristen Tatar's up, Katrina Allen's up, Dickerson's yeah, up, Kristen's Ricky's up, Kona's contract. up. Like 320, gonna, 2025, think, you have a ton of like big, big players coming I think, up. Uh, so. I think House of Disc goes Mbappe style with PSG and gives Kristen Tatar equity in the company as part of her contract. I was about to say, there's no way she moves from House of Disc. No. I wouldn't think so. I, no. I, think, I think they legitimately could give her equity in the company. I think she should negotiate that. <laughs> you know, that was like, we haven't seen that too much in disc golf. We've seen it a no. few times where like players have become... Yeah, part owners of certain companies. I, I really know how thought. Much that I really it, thought that's what was what was happening with Paul whenever he moved to Discraft. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I really which thought that's Paul really. in a roundabout way because like he the PM yeah, stuff yeah, is like yeah. I think they're partners in that. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, I mean we haven't we haven't seen it for a while. I'll put it that way because again I don't know how much that pu is public information. But we haven't seen it for a while where players were able to negotiate part ownership and company right. mm -hmm. with you know and that could definitely be a bigger deal of yeah. like if you're betting on yourself like hey i'm a big enough player to carry this brand to the top yeah. and it's a newer brand a newer brand would probably be like hey we can't really afford to pay you but right. if you want 25 percent ownership we might be able to negotiate that mm -hmm. and you're like be betting on yourself of like i'm gonna be like gannon burr could be like i'm gonna be the top guy well, for can, the next like 10 years i can tell you for free let me carry this company to the top i would mm -hmm. take equity in house of discs you know well house of discs is a much different thing because you're giving yeah you're getting equity in a very massive thing yeah. i'm saying what we've seen previously is like a smaller companies like like it would make sense like if, if like a mint star disc or, or lone discs. star was able to land a ricky right yeah. and ricky's like i want 30 percent of the company as part of my deal still wouldn't be and then the mint's thing. like okay we can do this. You know what I mean? Like that, mm -hmm. that's more what I'm yeah. talking about. House of Discs would be completely different because yeah. 25, I mean, it would be like 2% of House well, of Discs. Well, the original, the, uh, the original model was when Prodigy, they didn't offer ownership, but they offered revenue they sharing. They did revenue share, yeah. Um, but then they didn't make profit. It was actually profit, profit sharing. Share, yeah. And they didn't make profit. Which is, yeah, as you wouldn't expect it because yeah, they're a brand well, new company. And well, and also like, why would they show profit if they're going to have to give it to the players? Yeah. Buy some new office chairs. <laughs> it's like it's the, literally the office surplus. It's like the office. Michael's like, it's like, like you can either hand out bonuses. How have we never memed that? Like if some only people think it's funny to hang out outside of Burlington with a bu bucket of fake blood. <laughs> if we were doing if we were doing this podcast back then, like that office clip with the prodigy situation dubbed over it. I mean, it's literally, it's like we can either pay the players or we could buy this new copier. <laughs> this new copier, or you can buy three more injection molding machines. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, Eagle to MVP. We got to talk about it. Five-year deal. He has reunited with Simon Lazat. We don't have details on how much he's getting paid, which if you remember, Simon, I don't think one of the details leaked. The details no, got leaked about his. Um, so, Eagle, much more under wraps, all of that. So, we don't know how okay, much he got over paid. Under, over under total value game. I'll give you five-year deal, total value guaranteed five million dollars over or under i think under. for eagle under yeah three million dollars i think that's close i think it's between two and a half and three million dollars okay because two and a half would be 500k guaranteed a year uh, um yeah i'm with you there and that's kind of the range i'm ex i would expect i would agree i think yeah because yeah I, I think that's probably the range it's at but I mean, he's still kind of broken. Yeah, he's he has he, <laughs> he can't throw yet. Yeah, like he's throwing lefty because he's, he's still recovering broken. from a surgery, it's which it's, there's expected to be a full recovery where he's throwing forehand mm -hmm. and backhand. But like, it means they might have got him at a discounted price. They might have got him on clearance. They signed. I mean, you, clearance, you signed him for a five year deal when he's still injured is like a, that's a big risk as a company because yeah, he's popular, right? Well, unless and like, they got him forty percent off. That's true. He's popular, right? And like this year, he's going to move a ton of plastic for them. He already has with these envies, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, he's going to move a ton of plastic right. for them and the branding capabilities of like getting him in Simon vlogs and him and Simon. Like, already. I mean, I already. I mean, that's huge. I, you, I don't get swayed by pros throwing plastic very often. He sure doesn't. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I've seen it all before. I've heard it all before. It's all the same. 
but both of them talking about the dimension <laughs> got me going should i really try a dimension Dang, like, dude. It, it felt a little too Using fast i've never thrown it i'm like hunter what are you doing you know it's gonna be too overstable i mean the That's crush funny. the crush boy is talking uh, about something is well so, never mind it's not it's different if it's, it's the, the gyro the, the gyros no, what, what was i hate Eagle? that, that, kind of, I hate be honest, that. that sounds too much like a female doctor Eagle. it's yeah <laughs> that's what i thought just be clear the other day whenever i said oh gyros, i don't mind that's the gyro all, you guys, guys were like what are you talking about I like I, well not all i like okay, the, i don't mind the gyro guys I, is that the one that that no, sounds like the slow-mo guys but but <laughs> unless disc mania owns crush boys just keep it which yeah. one was eagle posting about on his story like he was the mv peeps the mv peeps yeah because right now they're the gyro knots yeah, which I always, I've always versus MV Peeps. Yeah, the uh, uh, MV Peeps feels like an Eagle Vlog thing, though. It does. Like, what's up, my MV what's Peeps? What's up, MV Peeps? Yeah, like that. Ooh, feels I right. like that, but then, but yeah, but then MV it feels Peeps like you're like excluding the, anyone who doesn't. Like, people are gonna watch Eagle who don't necessarily love MVP. And well, never mind. You're, if you watch, if you watch that? Eagle, you love MVP. Do we now. need to jump on an MVP stamp with like the Peeps candy, like marshmallows on it? You think they'll let us run that? No, dude. Yeah. Too confusing. <laughs> um... <laughs> The um. it's a it's a huge. They're gonna make their money back quickly, but hey, it is a risk. They as far as just like became a winner all of a sudden, just start winning that's true. everything. So, but it is a risk as far as like if Eagle doesn't recover fully, right? Never the same again. Four years from now, how popular is he still? It's true. But if you can make all the money you paid, like. If, if think, you signed him two and a half million dollars and you can profit that off of Eagle's name this year and just put it into like an Eagle fund, Eagle then the rest fund. of it's just fun. Put it away. Let it grow. Put yeah. it in an Eagle fund. Put it into a high yield savings account, right? Yeah. Let that baby spin off some. Spin off, There baby. you go. That's how you make your no, Eagle I, money. No, I genuinely <laughs> think that with both Eagle and Simon, they are going to make such a high percentage of the total contract value in the first year, even the first few months, that that is how MVP they just kind of figured that out and they just snatched the two players that you could do that with. There's I mean, one guy that you could do that with left and that's Paul and not it's borderline. Like you could probably do it still, but like he was like, like a couple years ago, he was like, still it's pretty insane on MVP's part. that They were able to get both of them on there. It is. That's, that's pretty crazy. Well, I think I honestly think Eagle is you now you had, you'll have to hear me out fully. Hear Eagle out. is a bigger signing than Simon, in my opinion. I'm waiting because yeah, I'm gonna need to hear you out <laughs> twofold. He's joining Simon, okay? Right? So you uh, already yeah. have Simon. You're bringing them back together. Yes. I think them two together in content is more valuable than either of them. More valuable than either of them separate in content. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have just one head to head, like obviously Simon is more valuable than Eagle. But bringing Eagle back, reforming Simon with Simon. Like it struck. I still a think chord. the Eagle Simon is more important, though. The like, Simon signing. The Simon signing is more important. But the secondary part is Simon still to this day is like kind of struggles somewhat with some of the disc names and stuff. Like it's just not his personality to like be mm -hmm. super nerdy out mm -hmm. and care. I like this. Eagle McMahon is the nerd. Mm -hmm. Like he is. He can already tell you every plastic, everything, and he yeah. is fully bought into gyro. Yeah. Like he is. He was sitting down explaining. I like that He's explaining why Gyro actually does. So Eagle's your salesman. That's yeah, true. Simon's your exposure. That's a good point. So Simon, now, someone's like, I think this is like the fission plastic. Like Eagle's already doing blindfold guessing and guessing pretty much every MVP mold that exists. Yeah, like Eagle's know. in. I don't even know what to think about that. Right? Like <laughs> Eagle is nerds out about discs. Mm -hmm. So I think Eagle's the guy that can like, now you have the exposure from Simon, right? And Simon is going to make it, has made MVP popular by nature of being Simon and doing what he does with the disc. Now you have Eagle to voice what the disc does yeah. and also throw 700 feet and do stuff with the disc. But I'm saying like Eagle's your salesman type guy. I also think Eagle being there is going to help Simon because I feel like Simon never really knows what he's throwing with MVP. And now Eagle's going to be like, hey, throw this. Well, yeah, <laughs> no, I feel because I think them two together, just they match each other's energy very well and they make both of them have like awkward the wrong word but they have that like same oh, like awkward. nervous awkward energy that when they're yeah. together they're not uh-huh and it like fit it just fits well i think well i think also the way that they like pair together really well is if you're watching coverage i think people are a bigger eagle fan but if you're watching youtube content people are a bigger simon fan Does yeah that make sense i don't know if that's fully true but they they're people are huge fans of both of them and i think like you had a fan base that was somewhat split last year Mm -hmm. Of like, I'm a really big Simon fan and I'm a really big Eagle fan. So like, what do I do? 
Yeah, it's true. They took now that they're together. Out of the equation. Um, Anybody who is still on the like loved the Crush Boys thing and was still on the fence, like, do I go to MVP? Well, now made that decision easy. Yeah. For him.